Hello friends, how are you? My name is Ari Therger and today I'm going to talk about Ginunga Gap. This video was requested by one of my patrons, Jess Gold, who is interested in knowing more about a Roca through and Tursa through spiritual perspective on the Old Norse myths. So today I'm going to talk a bit about Ginunga Gap what it is according to the sources and later on I shall give you a possible interpretation for it. So I do hope you enjoy this video and let's start. Each civilization or each culture has its own version of the creation of the cosmos. In the Norse myths of creation it's particularly interesting that the creation of all things doesn't come from divine hands or a master plan engineered by a cosmic being. There was nothing at all in the beginning, just perfect silence and darkness. Yet there was enough to create. Primordial fire and ice, which in a chaotic harmony sprouted everything. Simple words expressing the great complexity of creation and yet maintaining its mystery. In the Norse myths, Ginungagap is the great void of nothingness. The fires from Muspelheim and the ice from Niflheim eventually collided in this great void, developing form and creating life. And the first cosmic being came forth, Ymir, whose name means Screamer, which is pretty interesting given the description of Ginungagap itself being a void of perfect silence. There was no sound of anything, no voice, no song, nothing could produce any kind of vibration. In silence, the tiniest vibration of sound can be the loudest if there was never any sound before to make a comparison. Cosmic primordial fire and ice come together and it created vibration, created sound, and that first sound gains living form, Himir. In the Old Norse spirituality, sound is intimately tied with life, hond, the breath. Huden himself gives to the first humans this hond, this breath. In many ancient cultures, especially shamanic and animistic in nature, it's the breath of nature or some nature deity that creates the essence of the soul and gives it and, and gives life by giving its breath. And Galdr itself, singing incantations, was to give one's breath to thought and purpose letting loose the sound of the soul, vibrations. So in Ginungagab, Himir is the first vibration that will influence other elements into creating new vibrations and therefore new existence, new creations. Then we have the cosmic cow, Audumbla, created out of the melting primal frost, feeding Himir, the progenitor of the gods. It seems quite strange in this complexity of the creation of the cosmos, all of a sudden a cow what the hell is a cow doing there? Some would argue it's a distraction to drive away the attention from the hidden truth. But a cosmic cow is not that absurd. Aldumbla means the hornless wealth. And in many ancient societies, the image of the holy cow has always been closely related to the figure of the Earth Mother, a symbol of nourishment, which in many ancient societies was revered, the cow worshipping of Asia Minor. Germanic processions related to deities of fertility and prosperity where cows were involved either pulling chariots or being sacrificed. The sacrifice of the cow in Western Europe during the early Bronze Age when a settlement was created to give wealth, prosperity, plenty. And the variety of mother goddesses related to the cow. Aldumla uh, represents nourishment, the cosmic essence that continues to provide life by feeding it. Primordial ice and fire continue to collide and to create even more, a cycle of creation which needs fuel to continue to burn and create. Aldumla is obviously a metaphor for the nourishment that the cosmos needs to continue to thrive and a very ancient proto-Indo-European motif was added to the myth of creation, the holy cow mother goddess provider of nourishment and therefore of life. Aldumla itself is nourished by ice, 
So there is a clear cycle of chaos and destruction that provides more life, more existence. And this creation goes on and on from the very first being all the way to the creation of the gods and the cosmic worlds and the creatures living in each of them. We have to remember that the great majority of the Norse myths came to us from Snorre Sturluson, a medieval Christian. So, without a doubt, Snorre himself received certain religious perceptions of the world and the cosmos. It's possible that this Ginungagap is the early medieval uh, pr pr rep representation of what lies beyond the world, the limitations of a flat plane and then beyond a great chasm into nothingness and darkness. Because the cosmic geography of the Norse myths makes no sense whatsoever. It's a complete mess which seems to be the perspective of medieval Icelanders towards the geographical perception of our own world. And we have some references of a place called Ginungagap when the map comes to an end. For instance, Bishop Gundrabondur Torlkason in 1066 uh, refers to the northwest passage of the Icelandic map of America as Ginungagap. It's the boundary between what was discovered and the unknown. However, in pre-Christian Scandinavia, especially in pre-Viking Scandinavia, Paleolithic to early Bronze Age at least, the perception of the world and the realm of the divine seems to be concentrated on a reality where everything is connected and not separated worlds. In fact, the notion of nine cosmic worlds seems to be something added to the myths later on, greatly influenced by Judeo-Christian beliefs, especially noticeable in the Kabbalah. But that's a subject for another time. In prehistoric Scandinavia, there is this concept of in and out, Inangardr and Hutangardr, which I've already talked about on another video. Everything is focused on this concept of inside and outside, of order and chaos. So this perception of Ginungaga being a chaotic madness from which everything originally came doesn't necessarily have to be the interpretation of total darkness, which is very similar to the first chapter of the Genesis, which describes the state of the universe before the intervention of the divine. Ginungagap seems to be the chaotic state of existence from which everything originally came, where the first vibration took place, almost like the original source of magic, in the sense of being the source of primordial power and energy that gave life to everything, the very core of existence and primordial wisdom. Remember the words of Nikola Tesla, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency and vibrations. It's strange, but maybe prehistoric people had a different perception of the world and were closer to the truth. As I've said before, there is no reason to believe that we nowadays are on a higher intellectual and spiritual level than our ancestors were. If anything, it's probable that our ancestors, being in constant contact with nature and their surroundings, were far more sensitive even to the cosmic forces. Remember that in this age of electronics, we have walked further away from nature and we have lost much of our sensitivity. Maybe Ginungagap at first was exactly this, the junction of cosmic vibrations and energy that opened up the possibility of creation. Ginungagap may be the original source of primordial power or what we simply call magic, which in truth are cosmic forces at work through vibrations. It's interesting to see that in the Norse myths everything starts from a state of nothingness into a sudden chaotic harmonious disorder which creates life and events of gods, mankind, giants and other creatures develop until Ragnarok, when everything is destroyed and goes back to nothingness. And then again, a new Ginungagap and a new cycle of existence.
There is always this cycle of existence from birth to death to rebirth and on and on it goes. This story of creation is a reminder of, a of the very birth of existence, the primordial existence, and then a journey along darkness acquiring wisdom until we meet destruction which will set us free, completing our journey to acquire wisdom, accepting our fate and reach enlightenment. This could be a possible interpretation for the myth of Ginungagap. Just imagine Ginungagap as the endless darkness where the concepts of time and space are inexistent, a lawless realm without limitations, without impositions, completely free in its ability to create. Before the gods and their perspectives of order and balance, there was just chaos, an infinite primordial dimension from where everything originally came. Creation took place in here precisely because it was free from the limitations of any law, without restrictions, constantly evolving because it's free to evolve, limitless in its opportunities to construct and give form and produce. What if Ginungagap is the representation of the human mind itself, starting from total darkness, from nothing, not one single thought in it, free to create a multitude of realities, producing thoughts and without restrictions creating them, giving them existence, a form, creating reality. A mind without restrictions is a creative mind. Think about the impact religion has upon us, upon our minds, as individuals and as a collective force. Now think about a mind without such restrictions, a clean primordial mind where everything is possible because there are no previous restrictions that force us to an insignificant state where we are forced to think in a certain way if we want to be considered normal and be accepted within the very restrictions we have imposed ourselves. Ginungagap had no divine presence, so it was free to create. It had no balance, no order, and no restrictions capable of implementing limitations. It was simply free, and in that freedom it created and evolved constantly, until eventually the gods were created, complex minds with thoughts of their own, capable of emotions far more complex, developing their own ideas corrupted by the need to fulfill their wishes. Such minds uh, created limitations, implemented their order forcibly upon the cosmic freedom. Such is the way of our mind. It's without restrictions in the ability to think and create and evolve, unless we create restrictions with our fears, with our greediness, malice, the need to be above all others and thrive. We create our own realities and we impose them to others, creating limitations on other people and preventing them from developing their creativeness, constructing limitations on their ability to analyze and reshape reality. If someone gives you a certain line of thought that leads you to believe that you should never leave your room, those mind limitations will prevent you from experience limitless possibilities. One day you leave the room and go outside and conclude it was all a lie and there was no reason to remain locked away. Maybe it was fear, maybe it was a rule, maybe even for religious purposes, but limitations were created in your own ability to think and you missed so much until the limitations were broken. Maybe Ginungagap is the representation of our mind, of primordial darkness free from any predisposition to think in a certain way. Ginungagap was able to create in freedom. Think about our own hidden powers if our minds were as free as Ginungagap itself. Think about all the things we could create, be that good or bad. Think about the vastness of our power if we were indeed able to free 
our minds from external ideas and create our own path towards great wisdom and, subsequently, towards enlightenment. I think it should be one of our major objectives to achieve a mind state similar to the very essence of Ginungagap before creation, to become as pure as the very beginning, a state of mind capable of accepting knowledge and through it creating in freedom, adding more knowledge and expanding our perceptions, always evolving towards a greater wisdom and subsequently towards enlightenment. The human mind has no limitations and reality itself is as real as our own perspectives. Right, my dear friends, I hope you have enjoyed this philosophical perspective on Ginungagap itself. A special thanks to Jess Gold, my patron who is interested in certain darker and gnostic-oriented perspectives of Norse mythology. And I thought it would be interesting to speak about such perspectives if we start from the very beginning, from Ginungagap. Thank you so much for watching, see you on the next video and talk for real.